Hey guys, my name is Kajal, and today we're going to be talking about the Tannehill model. So before we get started, let's just take a quick overlook at our agenda for today. First, we're going to look at an introduction of the model and just get to know a quick overview of what it is in a general sense. Then we're going to go and take a look at the history of the Tannehill model. So this includes the who, what, where, when, why, and how it was created. We're going to move on and take a look at the theory in more depth, so we're going to look at what are known as the three general spheres, followed by a further breakdown where we will look at the seven domains that are formed as a result of the combination of three spheres. Lastly, we're going to watch two videos that are related to a current event, but they're going to tie in with the overall definition of the Tannehill model, as well as health promotion. So let's get started. First, we're going to look at an overview of the Tannehill model. The Tannehill model is an intervention-based model which shows how three different approaches relate to one another in an all-inclusive process termed as health promotion. The model itself serves as a framework for the linkage between these three approaches, which are known as prevention, health education, and health protection. To the left, I've included examples of each of the three approaches. The first one is an example of health protection, which typically includes policies which are set in place by the government or even a workplace. Then we have health prevention, which includes precautions that we typically take to avoid getting a disease or getting sick, such as washing our hands, covering our mouths, and currently wearing a mask. Lastly, we have health education. So this is typically seen in school or from adults where we're informed about the risks of a specific health concern and then we're taught skills to prevent getting injured or affected by that health concern. Moving on to history. You're all probably wondering about the big five W's of the Tannehill model. It all started with Andrew Tannehill of Scotland, UK in 1985. In the mid-1980s, he created a model that presented health promotion as three overlapping spheres of activity. The three spheres were health education, prevention, and health protection. Tannehill created this model in response to a shift in focus from health education and prevention to health protection and promotion. However, his model was constantly criticized because it paid insufficient attention to community-based factors, such as social, economic, physical, environmental, and cultural factors, as well as education, services, amenities, and community-based activity. He first revised his model in 1990 with Robert Downey and Carol Fife. Together, they came up with a book known as Health Promotion Models and Values, which I've included a picture of to the left. The three of them defined health promotion by using the same three spheres that Tannehill had came up with. However, they altered the definition of health education to be the following. They defined health education as the communication activity aimed at enhancing positive health and preventing or diminishing ill health in individuals and groups through influencing the beliefs, attitudes, and behavior of those with power and of the community at large. They also began to include interventions designed to promote empowerment such as resilience, self-esteem, and life skills into their definition of health education. The next slide shows the three spheres which make up health promotion based on this new definition of the Tannehill model. The first sphere is prevention. Prevention aims to decrease risk factors and minimize the consequences of a disease. This includes primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention methods. A common example of prevention would be a legislation such as a seatbelt legislation or even immunization, screenings, developmental surveillance, and alternatives to smoking, such as chewing gum. The second sphere is health protection. Health protection focuses on the legal controls and policies, as well as voluntary practice methods that are aimed at preventing ill health and enhancing one's well-being. Common examples of health protection are workplace smoking policies that prohibit smoking indoors. Tannehill asserts that health protection includes public policies that address fair access to housing, employment, education, and health care as well. Lastly, the third sphere is health education. As I previously stated, Tannehill's new definition of health education began to include intervention methods that were designed to promote empowerment and teach life skills to young adults. 
Common examples would be using lectures, courses, seminars, workshops, and classes to educate young adults about chronic illnesses, mental illnesses, tobacco use, and substance abuse. There is more to the Tannehill model than just these three spheres, so let's take a look at the next slide. There are seven domains of the Tannehill model. The first three were just mentioned, prevention, health protection, and health education. Now let's look at the remaining four. The fourth domain of the Tannehill model is a combination of prevention and health protection. It's known as preventive health protection. Preventive health protection simply means the use of processes to avoid getting sick or contracting an illness. A common example of preventive health protection is the fluoridation of public drinking water. The fifth domain is a combination of health protection and health education. It's known as health education aimed at positive health protection. This domain includes warning the youth of health risks to protect them in the future. A common example of health education aimed at positive health protection is pushing for a ban on smoking and tobacco advertisements. The sixth domain is a combination of health education and prevention. It's known as preventive health education. This means providing information to young adults to stop them from doing something harmful. A common example is providing smoking cessation advice and information to current smokers. Lastly, the seventh domain is a combination of all three, prevention, health education, and health protection. It is known as health education for preventive health protection. A common example of this would be lobbying for seatbelt legislation. In this domain, you're not only educating the youth about the risks of not wearing your seatbelt, but you're also setting in place a policy to prevent any injuries. I have included two videos that relate to health education, health protection, as well as prevention. They are up to date with the current COVID-19 pandemic. The videos show preventive measures that we can take to avoid contracting COVID, as well as educating anyone who doesn't know about these methods. The videos also educate the audience on what they should do if they have contracted COVID. Lastly, they bring to light the policy set in place in many states that mandate wearing masks. To watch the videos, you can either click on the image above each URL or click on their URL itself. Overall, the Tannehill model corresponds to the health promotion definition. The definition of health promotion, according to World Health Organization, is the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. The use of preventive methods, as well as policies set in place by health protection, in correspondence to educating the youth, we are allowing people to control their own health and their own well-being by simply providing them a helping hand. The seven domains of the Tannehill model all show methods that are used in everyday life to ensure the well-being of individuals. Whether it is just one sphere or a combination of all three, we're using these domains in our everyday life by performing preventive methods as well as obeying legislations that are set in place and showing the youth what we need to do to stay safe. My last slide is a list of references to show where I got all my information from. Thank you for watching.